Well, hello. I thought I'd start over here with my newest edition. Because I just find it to be so beautiful. Oh, and he's got a new prawn coming up. Oh, yeah. So he's happy in his new home. Um, it's a bird's nest fern. I, don't, I like it because it's not variegated and it's not going to shed all over the place. And my pink princess... She just keeps going and going. But you know, I bought my daughter one and she's had to top it a few times now and make new plants to give them away. And mine just hasn't really reached that glory yet. See, it has more ways to go up the pole. So I don't know, but he's an easy one to grow, or she. And my tree philodendron, you know, he keeps trying to branch out, but I'm thinking he might need more sun because he looks a little leggy. So I'm going to put him a little closer to the light, but he's still happy and healthy. And my Michael. I forgot the name of these evergreens. I think the lady I was talking to said they came from Washington or Oregon. Not sure, but look here. It's got a lot of new growth. And it looks happy and healthy, but down here, it gets so dried out, I'm going to have to cut this away. I'm thinking that the light can't penetrate this far down into it, I'm not sure. But, uh, I don't know, I might try and put it in a different room where it has more light, but it didn't seem to be happy there. It might have been the pink light it wasn't happy with. But I did, you know, I do see new growth, so... I'm hopeful. I'm sorry that this happened to it, though. And this is the geranium my mother gave me a cutting of a few months ago. I had to repot it. You see, he's so pretty. I'm still trying to get my alocasia. to re-root for me and I'm not having a lot of luck but it's not soft and squishy so I'm really hoping you know with a little more tender loving care it can come around and unfortunately these poor cuttings fell off so I'm trying to root them as well I like these containers you should keep them you can reuse them to do this kind of plant growing or even make your little seedlings in here and it keeps a nice humidity going in there. And I just put it in this tray because in case it leaks water, it's not gonna leak on the floor. The English ivy is impressive to me. I like that. And a lot of my calanchos are bouncing back from when I cut them all back. My calla lily though, it still hasn't bloomed, but I'm hopeful. My parsley is spent. So I don't know whether or not I'm going to grow a new batch of it or oh, what I'm going to do with that. But yeah. Oh, look at that. It's got nice roots on it. Poor thing. Anyway, it's looking good. My calla lily never bloomed. I don't know why. It's like it's third or fourth year, but I am hopeful for it. I had to cut everyone's light back a tad and I think they show it. I dropped the jungle vine to the floor because it's always trying to, let me show you, keep growing. Can I show you? Oh my, come here you. Can I show you this? Yeah, this is one of its tendrils. It's trying to reach the top of the canopy. Sorry. It's trying to reach the top of the canopy of the jungle. So, I thought I would let it dry from the floor. It's working perfectly. Now, I've been having trouble with my potho over here. I had to take one leaf off. And because it was kind of yellowed, I thought, well, maybe they didn't have enough water. So, I'm trying to keep it a little bit more moist. And these are, oh, just little things. I'm hoping, oh, did they already? Oh. I'm just trying to root them. They're from the succulents that I had and anything extra that fell off or anything I put in here. So I'm hoping to do more micro landscaping with that. Uh, yeah, and more 
more succulents. But this one here, that's going to be really fun in my graveyard garden. Uh, he's going to go with the ghost cactus. He seems to be pretty happy. And as you can see, <laughs> they're all pretty happy and healthy. And, you know, I've been concerned about my cosmic cactus. But you see how inside he's blacker? If he keeps growing like that, that part of him isn't all covered up with the paint. And I'm hoping that he'll survive. Oh, you don't want to forget Christopher. And this here is one of my stone succulents. See how they're, he's having like a little twin or a goiter, <laughs> you know, coming on. So I thought he was really cute. These are the ones where you water so very rarely. Yeah, and another field of artichokes to be had. And the little microscopes I'm doing are still doing well. I just get them wet whenever I come through and water and I think that's really sweet. And in the bird bath. And my field of artichokes I made. I keep coming by and checking on them and making sure, you know, if they look kind of spindly, they get a little bit of extra water like that one did. But they all seem to be taking rather well. And they seem to be relatively happy. I'm hoping so. I think it'll be really beautiful in the end, especially if I end up putting air fern um, along the back walls, kind of enclose it in a little bit. I'm just really thrilled with it. And the spider plant's looking a little leggy, but it was so close to the ceiling when I got it. I got it from my daughter-in-law that it didn't get enough light. So I'm just letting it do what it wants to do. It seems to be happy because, you know, I always judge it basically according to its little spiders attached to it. Because they all look like they're perky, you know. So he'll fill out in time. This is my loudest room. That's my carrots and my radishes. And I'm hoping that the little watermelon seed will finally come up in there. But I've got a feeling I've got to put my drip irrigation system together in here because it requires so much water. And still, no onions. Now the potatoes are doing wonderfully. But I still think I need to add more soil. But they take more water than any other plant that I have. But this is kind of exciting. And you know, my cilantro, it grows in the shadow of the light. And there's my drip irrigation stuff I need to do something about. I keep putting it off. Now my tomatoes are a little dehydrated at the moment. I had to take the other tomato out. I just didn't have any more room in here for it and I'm hoping that it'll do better getting um, 16 hours instead of just 12 hours of sun. But I'm starting to get, well let's see, tomatoes. So that makes me a happy camper. I'm hoping you should still see it. It's my tomato with the heart. So I'm hoping it'll be happier in here. It looked like it was kind of suffocating itself. I might have to take it apart and do something with it. But look it, it's giving me tomatoes. And this here is just like my overflow for now. But my succulents I took out of the fairy garden and my stone succulents, lipos, they're doing rather well. And that's really all I had to show you this time because not a whole lot has changed. And for once, I actually have a video. No, it won't come out in the same month. Doug on it. This is my June update. And it's actually July 2nd. <laughs> but it's close, it's close. Everything's doing really well. This room is getting very, better aeration. Thank you, Charlene, from Charlene's Hangout. I had some plants that were suffocating, like the tomato plant, and I forgot that if I don't leave, one of the doors open in my house, one of the doors inside, the air won't flow right. The air is flowing great now. So you guys have yourselves a lovely day, and I will as well. And hopefully we'll have a lot more produce to be talking about in another month. You have yourselves a wonderful day. Bye.